Welcome to Waterbox Live, coming at you every Wednesday, 12 p.m. Eastern. We got a big surprise for you guys today. We're in the second uh, week of our setting up our Waterbox Silver Marine 40.2. So, Dean, tell me, tell me what we're uh, we're going to accomplish. Today. Wow! Listen, we are going to add fish, Richard, to the tank for the first time. Very, very exciting. I mean, you guys are going to have to stay tuned with us. We went to a local fish store to go pick out some fish. We're going to kind of show the process of how it works, and we're going to show you how to acclimate them to the water box. This is going to be really cool. Really, really, really cool. Stay tuned, guys. Welcome back, guys. So, so Dean, give me a rundown of what we're, we're, we're going to do today, what we accomplished yesterday while we were at the store. Yes, um, yes. Basically, <clears throat> today we're going to, I said, we're going to talk about acclimating fish. You know, a lot of people don't, uh, have never done this before, and we kind of want to show them the process, going to the local fish store, mm -hmm. what fish to pick out. I mean, for a freshwater tank, I mean, there's a lot of varieties here. I mean, you, you got uh, aggressive fish, you got community fish, uh, discus, planted tanks. There's so many, so we got to kind of decide where we want to go with the water box. Um, we'll pick the fish out, we'll bring them back here, uh, show them how to acclimate the fish. It's going to be really fun. Good. So we did lose our stream on Facebook, so I'm going to... We're starting over. No, we'll, we'll go... Keenan, go live with the fish. Hey guys, welcome. We are today at Ocean Blue Aquarium here in Altamont Springs, Florida. I want to show you guys real quick on what it takes to pick out the right fish uh, for your water box. So come along, let me show you. Guys, this is the fresh water section here at Ocean Blue. Um, we set up that 40.2. It's really, it's, it's getting ready. Now we need some starter fish. And we got to pick out what fish is going to be best for us. So what? There's so many varieties here. Uh, as you can see, uh, these fish look very, very, very active. Very, very active. These are the African cichlids. These are kind of more of your semi-aggressive species. We also have to determine what type of tank do we want. Do we want a community tank? Do we want an aggressive tank? Do I want a planted tank? There's a lot of uh, factors in there. But I think today we're gonna go with a more community uh, tank, a little more peaceful, a little bit hardier, uh, just to show everybody how to do it. We have some rams here, also like the angelfish. Well, we got to be careful when picking the right fish to start out on a cycle. When I say cycle, we have to build up the ammonia process in there, which is going to turn into nitrite and it's going to turn into nitrate. That cycle could be a little stressful for certain types of fish. So like this angelfish here, I would strongly avoid that fish when cycling your tank until after you'll see this beautiful guy here a little more delicate, so we want to kind of stay away from him until that cycle is complete, then we can go ahead and add him uh, to the tank. But here's a, a bunch more here, if you can see these guys. They're beautiful fish. Beautiful, but once again, a little bit more delicate. But the red guys you see in here, the Serpe Tetras, these are very hardy, the little red guys in there. So you could start with them as an option. Some other options here I'm looking at is this Pristilla Tetra. You can check these guys out. They're kind of neat. I know some people are like, oh, they're just silver with a little, little flags on them. I actually like them. I think they're really, really cool when you get them in groups. Really nice. Also, we got some uh, guppies over here. There's also uh, some more tetras. But I said they look really neat when they're in a group. And I think in that water box, they look really, really sharp. There's some uh, rose line barbs in there. We got some rainbow fish, some scissor tails. Really, really nice. And you know, it's another option, guys. We can go with goldfish. Now, goldfish is a cold water species. 
Um, but once again, goldfish need to be kept with goldfish. You don't want to mix goldfish with tropical fish because they need different requirements, different food requirements, different temperature requirements as well. So we got a lot to choose from. He's even got some discus in here, which are really, really difficult. Um, I said, I don't know if you can see them in the back there, but these guys need really warm water, lots of water changes, a lot of maintenance involved on these discus. Um, so we're gonna stay away from those today. But also check out these cichlids over here. Really, really sharp, man. Look at the colors of these fish. I mean, beautiful. Peacock cichlids, wow. Wow, look at these guys, man. They're like ready to go. Awesome, awesome fish, man. This is what I used to start out in the hobby with. Wonderful, wonderful fish. The coloration is gorgeous. They probably need a little bit bigger tank than the 40.2. But one of our larger ones, man, like a 170, man, awesome cichlid tank, awesome cichlid tank. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna show you guys how they bag up the fish. All right, so guys, now we've decided which fish we wanna start with. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab one of these blue garamis. I think they're really nice, great fish, it's kind of hardy. Uh, we'll put one in the tank, I think it'd be really great. So when you go to your local fish store, here's how they do it. They're actually gonna get a collection cup, they're gonna get a net, they're going to go ahead and get some water into this container. And they had the nets already sanitized, just ready to go. So we'll go ahead and fish out a nice specimen. We'll bring them to the front. And we're like, hmm, which one do we get? Maybe this guy, right? He looks nice. So we'll grab him. They place them in the cup. So also when you're picking out your fish guys, you want to make sure he's got no spots on him. He looks real nice. You know, he, he's a good specimen. We've been monitoring him for a little while. He looks really cool. I think it'd be a great addition to the 40.2. So what we'll do is we'll come over here. And a lot of people ask, you know, how do you transport fish? You know, how do they get fish moving around the country? plastic bags and I know it's crazy but this is what they've been doing for many many years That's it. so we got the fish in the bag real nice never ever blow into the bag because once again you got co2 you're blowing out but this thing this guy needs oxygen so if you blow into this bag you're gonna kill the fish so we want to capture some air in that bag Twist it up for you. Real nice. And it kind of seals it up real good. Now I always like to double bag all my fish. I always ask the fish store to, hey man, can you double bag that for me? Because you never know, man. That, that bag might get a little leak in it or something might go wrong. Come undone on your way home. So I always put a bag over the top of the other one, just like this. And what happens is, be real careful with it, it seals that fish in there. So now it's in there real secure, it's kind of double insulated, really, really great. So this guy's ready to come back to the office here to put in the 40.2. We're gonna grab some more fish. We'll check back with you here in just a second. Hey guys. Hope you enjoyed that video we did uh, a little bit earlier. We, uh, it was very exciting to pick out those fish. So what we've done is we've brought the fish back here to the water box here at the office. Um, and we're gonna show you kind of how we acclimate these fish to, to your water box. So if you can, come on in here. Uh, basically, we took the bags and we, pour, we cut the bags and we poured them into a bucket. So this bucket, uh, this fish have been sitting in this bucket here uh, for about 30 minutes. And what we did is we started a drip line. The drip line, guys, is this uh, basically, we take some airline tubing, uh, you can see, and we actually put it up through the teeth in the water. You want to basically start a siphon on this drip line, we call it. It's just an airline tubing. So we want to flood this, this line. And what I usually do is I put a knot at the end of it. Um, sometimes you can use a syringe to kind of pull the water through. You can suck on a little bit to try and get that siphon started. Um, and you can adjust the knot um, here for the water flow going into the bucket. I said, you want to do a nice slow acclimation, right? So 
and why are we doing this, guys? We're trying to get the uh, the pH balance to kind of match up. We're trying to get the water temperature to match up. Um, we want to make a smooth transition for these fish into the water box uh, so they don't get stressed out. So a lot of people get uh, ick breakout on their fish. Um, it, it's a stressful time, so we want to make it as smooth as we can into this water box. So these guys have been dripping for about 30 minutes. For the magic of TV, we've kind of sped up everything for you uh, to show. And now we're we're good to go. Also guys, make sure when you're running your siphon, the water level is slowly dropping in your aquarium. So you want to make sure you keep an eye on the water level so the pump doesn't start running dry on you. Uh, we've been monitoring this. Uh, everything is looking really good. Our temperature has been set. Uh, the water has been conditioned. We are ready to add the fish into the water box. Very, very exciting. This is what everybody loves to do. So I'll go grab a, a net here. And basically, I'm going to stop this drip, and you just want to break the siphon. And what happens is the water will start coming down the tube there, uh, because you don't want that, that water to uh, get all over the floor. So we've got that <coughs> going here, and we've got some real exciting fish here. And we'll just kind of net them out. I'm going to bring them right in here, and you want to see, you want to let them kind of just swim out on their own a little bit. Boy, they look real happy. we got a couple more here. And this is that little garami guy that we saw in the video. He's just chilling. Yeah. Looks really, really good. I think we may have got them all. There's three. One, two, three, four, five. And uh, yeah, six, seven. And then we got the little garami. Now sometimes you'll see they'll go straight into hiding because they're kind of scared a little bit. They're trying to get that defensive mode going. Uh, but it looks really, really nice. I said, what we're going to do, guys, is also we're going to, uh, uh, you want to wipe down the water box, too, if you have any uh, drip marks after putting the fish in. Make sure your light is set properly um, on timers. Everything is just really ready to go. So now we're going to be cycling this tank out, right? So over the next few weeks, that bacteria is going to start getting uh, set up in the tank. <clears throat> we're going to um, check the ammonia levels. We're checking nitrite levels and nitrate levels. Now, once we actually get a nitrate reading on this water, we know that this tank is, we call it cycled. Um, so, because we don't want any ammonia in that tank. So once that, we test this out over the next couple weeks, it tests out, we have a nitrate level, which is very minimal, we're good to go. We can now start adding more fish into the tank. That's gonna be real exciting. We'll check back with you guys in a few weeks too, give you a follow up on the tank and kind of show you um, also, make sure you get um, you know a, a good fish food as well, and don't overfeed the fish. This is huge, 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 huge. So really, I mean, the size of the the stomach of a fish is actually the size of their eyeball. So very, very small. They're not smart enough to stop eating, guys. So we want to just put a small pinch of food in there. Once they get acclimated, we'll put a small bit of food in there, only the, enough food that they can eat and consume in maybe a minute, two minutes tops, okay? And we can do this no more than once a day. I know kids love to feed their fish, and I mean, if they accidentally dump the whole thing of fish food in there, man, major problem, we're gonna have to get that food out as quick as possible. So you don't want any uneaten food just kind of laying on the bottom of the gravel, that's a bad sign. So we're wanting you to have a good experience with your water box. I said, keep an eye on your fish, Make sure they're all eating properly. Uh, you can see they actually start schooling in the back there. Um, really, really neat. Now, we picked tetras here. These are Pristilla tetras that are in the back behind that rock. We also have some guppies here at the top. Uh, three of those guys, if you can see them. Real colorful. We've got two males and one female there. And I also have a Garami. I think he's hiding somewhere under one of those rocks. Somewhere in there. But this will be a nice 
uh, you don't want to overstock the tank when we're when we're cycling. You know, that's another uh, real important thing, guys. Is that you know, slow and steady is going to win the race on this thing. I mean, this tank can handle quite a bit of fish in here. I said actually we're going to have about 40 inches of fish will be allowed to be put into this tank. So usually they say one inch per gallon uh, is a good stocking level uh, for a freshwater tank like this. So, you know, considering that each one of those little tetras is about an inch, you know what I mean? So now we've got seven, we're seven inches in to our maximum capacity of 40. Also, we have to understand these fish are going to get bigger. But actually, these tetras won't get much bigger than that, so we're going to be safe there. Um, but if you wanted to put an Oscar in a tank, I mean, you got to understand this Oscar is going to get two feet. So you got to understand how big, you should ask your uh, local fish store as well, how big is this fish going to get? You know, so you got to prepare ahead of time, make sure you're picking the right specimens. But it turned out really great, guys. The water is crystal clear. Um, you see that Starfire glass really shining through, man, on this water box. Um, really, really exciting stuff. We'll probably add some more decorations here in a little bit. I'll run to the local fish store and kind of pick up some more decorations. But for right now, I'm real happy with the way it turned out. Dean, for the guys that didn't watch some of our first videos in this series, tell, tell some of these viewers a little bit more about the Silver Marine. Yes, actually, so if you guys didn't watch our first video, this is the Silver Marine 40.2 uh, all-in-one aquarium. It retails for $399 comes with the pump and all the media. It does not come with the light. Light is optional. Uh, you can pick whatever light you choose on that. But this is Starfire glass, guys, all sides of it. We've got a dual returns uh, system here. Uh, really, really great. It has two Micron socks uh, here, and I can kind of shine the light on there so you can see that. Uh, it's got baffle system in there. We've got sponges and carbon. Um, our pump sits here in the middle chamber. Um, really, really nice, and you can also see it's whisper quiet, guys. I mean, this thing is just silent. Really, really nice. It's got this, uh, the teeth here have been etched out of the glass. So this is a solid glass back on this. Um, so it's really, really uh, well made. Um, beautiful quality. You also notice the seams on here, guys. I mean, super clean, man. There's no, no silicone up the edge on this thing. It's super, super clean. Um, every water box is water tested at the factory before it gets uh, crated and shipped uh, to you. So really, really exciting there. It's got a, um, and actually the glass actually hangs over the lip a little bit so it's a flush mount with the cabinet. So you can see this is a real flush thing. It's not, uh, there's also a rubber mat on the bottom here to help level the tank out. Really, really, really sharp. Now, guys, you can also run salt water in this tank as well if you wanted to. You don't have to do fresh water, um, which is a really great. Once again, the dimensions are two feet by two feet. It's kind of like a cube shape, really, really nice. And I believe this is 18 inches high. So, real, real excited on it, guys. I mean, if you have any questions, you can check out waterboxaquariums.com. We've got all the details on all that stuff. Um, also, coming up, I know a lot of people love these build videos. It's time to do some salt water. Okay, so starting next week, guys, we're going to do a 20 gallon water box cube with the Starfire cube, and we're going to do a salt water reef in that. It's going to be a three part series. Uh, we're going to stop at some local fish stores, pick out some, in, uh, some cool uh, rocks, corals, fish. Uh, we're going to build this thing out, and we're going to really trick this out, this little 20 gallon, over the next uh, three videos. So that's coming up starting next week. Um, but we'll also chime in there through, through the weeks. We'll kind of keep cutting back to this tank as well, I'll kind of show you the progression on it. Really, really, really sharp. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you have any questions, please comment below. Um, man, we're excited. I mean, Waterbox Live, remember, every Wednesday coming at you at 12 noon. Uh, if you, that's it. I'm blown away, guys. I'm just blown away.